we'll look at the, the Word of God tonight. If you've got your Bibles with you and you want to turn to Leviticus chapter 19, and we're going to read from verse 31. Thanks a lot. Leviticus 19 and verse 31. This is what the Word of God says. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And God will bless his word to us this evening. Now what we're going to look at tonight is a class of spirit called familiar spirits. Now familiar spirits are so named because they are familiar with a person's life or with a family way. In other words, that they know that family well. Now they're, uh, they're a type of spirit that are very common amongst those that practice witch witchcraft and those that move in spiritualist meetings. But they don't limit themselves to these practices alone. They get involved in other people's lives. Every spirit that you read about in the Word of God or you would encounter in life, every spirit is a personality. They have an intelligence, they have an emotion, and they have a will, and they can communicate. In fact, every personality has the ability to relate to another. If you was to take human beings, for example, you will find that we build our relationships up through communication. And it's by communication uh, our, our relationships, if you like, develop and grow. So likewise, a person can actually form a close relationship with a familiar spirit. They can develop that relationship. They can do that willfully or they can do that out of ignorance. And it comes really through contact or communication. In fact, communication is the main trait of any familiar spirit. Every spiritist or every medium today will have a familiar spirit or a spirit guide directing them or giving them advice or information that they can deliver to other people. And even if they think it's a gift of God and even if they think that you know, they're doing it out of love or a service to other people, it's really from the demonic realm and so when a person consults a medium or a spiritist, that medium or spiritualist is simply a link or a line or a channel between the demonic realm and this present world. And any help or any advice that that person gives or any information that they gain comes from a familiar spirit who simply uses a medium or a spiritist, a witch, all the same things where God is concerned, he uses them as his mouthpiece. Now, even if the information that is given to a person appears accurate, it appears correct, it is nothing more than a deception. A familiar spirit is just baiting the hook. The enemy always baits the hook for a person to buy. So he baits the hook for a person to buy. And the reason why the information is often given uh, is correct is basically because that particular information, you know, has come from that familiar spirit that may have known that loved one, may have been familiar with a loved one's life. People go to, to spiritualists and they may go out of comfort or looking for some comfort, a reassurance that one of their loved ones is now safe, who's passed over. And you know what, folks, they go to these places and that, that spiritist medium may give them information that only they would know. And it's because that spirit lived or dwell or was familiar with the ways of that particular person who is now deceased. So it knows certain information, it passes those information over. It watches, it observes a person's life, it monitors a person's life. There are many spirits that monitor people's lives and look for weaknesses to trip a person up, but they also monitor a person's life really to watch and observe so that when communication comes, through familiar spirits, they can give information as that uh, baited hook to reel a person in. So they may have even dwelt, as I said, within a, a departed loved one's <coughs> life. Therefore, they know all about that loved one, they're familiar with that person's ways. So if we were to think about uh, other issues that we face in life, other things that we think about in life, what about deja vu, for instance? Many people, sometimes experience a moment where they feel they've been to a certain place or they've done something before. And this is because a familiar spirit has already uh, been to that place. It's already experienced those particular things 
in the life it previously occupied. And so really it's just relating information from that person. We'll get to today even people that reckon that they've lived life before, that they were some famous person in a previous life. Again, this is because a familiar spirit has lived in those particular people and it communicates those thoughts to the other person. It communicates those things over. And uh, it does that really, I, I believe, to deceive, to cause a person to have an incorrect belief system, to cause a, a person to move in error. You see, if a person thinks they've lived before, really what they believe in is reincarnation. And yet the Bible tells us in Hebrews 9 and verse 7, it says it's appointed for a man to die once and then judgment. Now I want you to notice it said it's appointed for a man to die once, not twice, not three times. It's not that you live two or three lives where you can uh, progressively improve your life. That's the lie of the devil to stop you embracing the salvation that Jesus Christ offers you. Stop you embracing the opportunity of giving your life over to him so you could spend an eternity with him. So familiar spirits, you know, uh, are those that would communicate with people. Familiar spirits, the word uh, in Hebrew for a familiar spirit, um, or a necromancer, one who talks to the dead, it's a word that's called ob, ob, ob in Hebrew. And it means a leather skin or a bottle. You see, to the Hebrews, the sound of a spirit speaking through a medium sounded like a noise coming from a skin bottle. And a bottle really is a vessel. And Father God doesn't want any skin vessels, that's me and you, being used by familiar spirits. He wants the Holy Spirit to move through our life. It's important to remember that King Saul, the Bible said, died because he consulted a medium or a spiritist. In 1 Chronicles 10 and verse 13, he says, Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He didn't keep the word of the Lord, even consulting a medium for guidance. So where did he go for his guidance? He didn't go to the living God in true repentance to seek God out. And there are many today who have so-called spirit guides. And uh, this is again a deception that this guide really is a spirited being, it's a familiar spirit, and it deceives people to think that it's of God and not of the enemy, when really it's of the enemy. And they also believe that it will benefit their relationship and nothing really could be further from the truth. Believers too often have spirits guiding them which they believe is the holy spirit massive deception sometimes within the body of christ and the believer is reluctant to break uh, away from this particular uh, spirit that they believe is the lord because of that they believe it is the lord so when you give them advice when you speak to them they would never break away from it because you're just a believer you're just a pastor you know but yet the lord is speaking to them it's the lord that he's speaking to them and he's bigger than you are so they're not going to listen to you and yet in second corinthians 11 and verse 4 it talks about really uh, listening to another jesus it talks about something sounding like another jesus something speaking to you like another jesus paul talks if you receive another jesus than the one we preach to you and this is why i've said in times past that the Jesus that the Jehovah's Witnesses believe in is another Jesus. The Jesus the Muslim believe in is another Jesus. The Jesus the Mormons are believing is another Jesus. It's a different Jesus. And so the enemy impersonates, is an imposter. A familiar spirit will show itself, even if it appears to be like somebody else. This is why when a person goes to a spiritualist and even if something appeared, even at the bottom of the bed, the dead Uncle Joe stands at the bottom of the bed and tells them information, etc. It is not your dead Uncle Joe. It's an evil spirit that is impersonating. And because it gives people information that is true or they know about, <coughs> it's really reeling them in and they think it has to be genuine. But it is not. It appears in a familiar form to entice you. It appears in a familiar form, so it's more acceptable to the person that is seen it. But God wants you to be free of all these particular things. Familiar spirits are not from the Lord. They come right away from the enemy. 
So the enemy uses them against people. When we read the word of God, we find uh, uh, an incident in the life of Saul. It says the Philistines, this is reading from 1 Samuel 28, verse 4, it says the Philistines assembled and came and set, set up uh, a camp at Shunom where Saul gathered the Israelites and he set up the camp. When Saul saw the Philistines army he was afraid, terror filled his heart, he inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dream or by Urim or prophet. So there's the means that God spoke to his people through the prophet of God, but Samuel had died. So there was no word from the prophet and the, the Urim and the Forum, if you like, that was on the breastplate of the priest. That was a means of communication with God. It wasn't communicating to Saul. You don't need an Urim and a Forum today, by the way, folks, because you have the Holy Spirit not covering your heart, within your heart. So the Holy Spirit is within us. But the means that was available to Saul were not available. So he inquired of the Lord, but the Lord didn't answer him. God didn't speak to him through dreams, another way that God brings revelation. So Saul said to his attendant, find me a woman who is a medium, and I may go and inquire of her. In the King James, it says, find me a woman who has a familiar spirit. So he knew exactly what he was doing. He was seeking guidance from the wrong camp. Whenever you seek supernatural help, supernatural guidance in any way from the enemy's camp, if you seek supernatural guidance that's not of the Spirit of God, the Bible calls it divination. And it's an offence before the living God. Once you start to touch anything in the enemy's camp, the enemy marks your card. You go away with what you bought more than you bargained for. If a person visits a spiritualist or a medium, they actually go away with that spirit with them. It will start to affect their life from that moment on. So where we find Saul, who's not getting uh, any word from the Lord, maybe the problem in Saul's life, he needed to repent. But we see nothing of repentance there. So the person he's speaking to says, there's one in Edor, in Endor. And he said, so Saul disguised himself, put in another clothes, and at night, he and two men went to the woman, consult a spirit for me. Not consult the Lord. He says, consult a spirit for me. <clears throat> and bring me up the one I name. But the woman said to him, surely you know that's what Saul has done. He's cut off mediums and spiritists from the land. Why he set a trap for my life to bring me about my death? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, as surely as the Lord lives, you will not punish me. Uh, you not be punished for this. Then the woman asked, whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Saul, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, bring up Samuel, he said, sorry. Samuel, she cried out on the top of her voice and said, Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, don't be afraid, what do you see? And the woman said, I see a spirit. The margin in the Bible says, I see spirits or I see gods. I see a spirit coming up out of the ground. What does it look like, he asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down, prostrate uh, before him, his face to the ground. Saul never even seen what it was. He perceived. He perceived off the woman's description. This one was a medium. This one was a witch, the Bible even refers to. And yet, he's going to her for help and advice, asking her to bring up a spirit. And the spirit that comes up as the appearance, as the appearance of Samuel, it does not mean it's Samuel himself. Many people think it's Samuel, even witches and spiritualists, you know, use this as, as almost like to, uh, to give credit to the work they do, because they see this in the word of God. But really, it's an imposter, an impersonator. And the Bible says this, Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I don't believe that Samuel would have been disturbed anyway, and he's in the presence of the Lord. Saul said, uh, I'm in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has turned away from me. He no longer answers me either by prophet or by dream. So I called on you to tell me what to do, seeking guidance in what to do 
in this future event. Samuel said, why do you consult me now that the Lord has turned away from you and you have become an enemy? You've become his enemy. So Saul had turned away from the Lord and the Bible is telling us the Lord had turned, he, he had turned away from the Lord and God had become his enemy. God had turned away from him because of the sin within his life. He'd become an enemy of the living God. And so we're clearly getting that God was not speaking to him. There was a barrier between him and the Lord because he needed to repent and get right before the Lord. And this imposter says, the Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to the, one of your neighbors, to David, because you didn't obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Am Amalekites. The Lord has done this to you today. And he goes on to say the Lord will hand him over to Israel and, and the Philist Israel to the Philistines. And by this time tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. You see, here's the giveaway. That spirit that was in, in, impersonating Samuel never mentioned repentance once. Never mentioned about turning to the Lord in true repentance. And it doesn't matter how vile a person's sin is, if they would turn to the living God, God would forgive them and God would restore them in relationship to him. And then this spirit that's impersonating says, the Lord will hand you over, you and your sons over uh, to me, you and your sons will be with me tomorrow. Now how can that be? Samuel's a man of God. Saul was not a man of God. So how could they be in the same place? They couldn't be in the same place because one was a man of God and one wasn't. The Bible teaches about the paradise of God. The word paradise really, you know, was, was speaking of a beautiful garden, a Babylonian garden. But it talks of paradise. And one of the, the words used for paradise in the Bible is Abraham's bosom. And you know the story that Jesus told of, of Lazarus and the rich man. <coughs> And how they both died and how the angels carried Lazarus to Abraham's bosom, the paradise of God. But when the rich man died, he said he went to hell. When the rich man, in all his torment, looked up and he saw Abraham, showing us that even in the supernatural realm, you will have knowledge, supernatural knowledge to see, you can feel, you can have emotion. Because this rich man is, is saying, you know, can you not send Lazarus to me? just to dip his finger in the water, to touch my tongue because of his fire, because of my thirst, because of the agonizing that he's experiencing. And Abraham tells him that, you know, in his life he enjoyed the pleasure. He said, but we can't even cross between you and me, there's a gulf. And he was asking, well, cannot somebody go back from the dead and tell my brothers and warn them about this place? So can you see how he's even got a compassion in that place? So every part of who he is is still intact. But he's not in that place that the prophet Abraham was in. He's in a different part. It's almost like the paradise of God, the two compartments. One for the righteous dead and one for the unrighteous dead. And this spirit is saying, you'll be with me, you and your sons, in this place tomorrow. So it's predicting his demise but they weren't going to the same place as Samuel. It's a liar. And familiar spirits will only tell the truth when it suits their kingdom and benefits them. And there are many people that have these leading them today. And as I said, you have Christians that think every voice they hear is the Holy Spirit. When in John's Gospel, in John's chapter one, it tells you, it says, test the spirit to see whether they're of God or not. And many people are in leading and direction that they think is God, sounds like God to them, but clearly is not the Lord. Because the things that it tells them to do don't line up with the scripture. And so they go off and do their own things. God's told me never to meet again with other believers just to seek him out on my own. Well, the Bible actually says don't give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. So it's a lie, it's a deception. And you've got to really distinguish between the voices that you're hearing. You know, your own voice. 
the voice of God and the voice of the enemy. You've got to distinguish between all those things and we to test by bringing it before the Lord. Every believer really needs a filter. And some believers do not have a filter where the things of God are concerned. Anything can go in. It's never filtered out. But we need a filter to filter out the things that are not of the Lord so we're not easily deceived. The world are deceived because they're looking for hope. They're looking for something in life. And although the church is the answer, the church doesn't always reach out to them. Therefore, they go to different means to find supernatural help. And whenever you look for supernatural help for a different means, it's not only error before the Lord, but it opens a doorway for the enemy to come into your life and to affect your life. And so many people, even believers, get infiltrated by familiar spirits that lead and guide them under the pretense that they're the Holy Spirit. Saul thought this was Samuel, when it clearly wasn't, going off only what the woman had seen. She so hadn't even seen him himself. He bowed down to where he thought he appeared, whether he appeared or whether he didn't. One thing we know, you know, that Saul believed what that witch had said. And we're to be people that believe the word of God and the word of God only. Because once you start to believe a lie that comes from the enemy, it will empower the enemy to bring about that lie in your life. So if you receive something that's wrong, a pathetic word, and you start to believe that, that pathetic word, it will start to cause that to take shape and produce in your life. And it's never come from the Lord. We've got to test things out before the Word of God, in particular where prophecy is concerned, because it's for education, uh, edification, encouragement, and comfort. So if it comes anything different to you and doesn't resonate with, your Holy, with the Holy Spirit within you as being right, you've got to you've got to get rid of that, folks. And there are many false things today. God wants us to seek Him out for help and guidance, to turn to Him and to turn to Him alone. We have a tendency in the church today, almost like a trend in the church today, that if you go to any conference, you can book in a little bit early, you can go and get a prophetic <coughs> word if you want. And many people do that. And it's almost like, I'm not criticising the prophetic words, prophetic words are there to encourage you and build you up. And we should move in those prophetic words. The Bible tells us, you know, to desire those gifts that build up the body of Christ. But it's almost like Christians are chasing a word of somebody else. Why can't they inquire of the Lord themselves? You see, even King David, when everything was taken from him at Ziklag, the Bible says he strengthened himself in the Lord. And God spoke to him. And so we need to be people that realise that God will speak to you. If you've got to rely on a prophet 200 miles away, or a prophetic word coming from 300 miles away, you better make sure that you take those people with you wherever you go. Because you'll never hear from the Lord. And in a sense, always to be chasing the word of somebody is nothing more really than Christian witchcraft. Why don't you go to the word of God and sit under the anointing of God and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, directly to you. It's about personal relationship. It's about God communicating with you. We don't have to have that word always coming through the mouth of another. It'd be far better if you could hear the Lord yourself. It's almost like the children of Israel, when God initially invited them into his presence, they were fearful of going into his presence, and he said to Moses, no, you know, the thunder, the lightning, we go up there, you know, we'll lose our lightning. Why don't you go up and, and, and speak on our behalf? And so they brought somebody as a middleman. And the only mediator between you and the, the, the Lord, the Father, <coughs> is the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's no real middleman between you and encountering the word from God. It comes from his Holy Spirit, so you don't need another person to do that for you. We're to seek the Lord in any situation. And if you find that the Lord isn't speaking to you, there's reasons why the Lord isn't speaking to you. In this situation, it's clearly because of, of Saul's lifestyle, his disobedience to the Lord, when he never fully come out, carried out the word of God and then pretended he did and also consulting, you know, a witch, which was against 
the word of God anyway. So why would you do something against the word of God and expect God to speak to you? Why would you do something that's contrary to God's word and really believe that God is in it and speaking to you? Did it encourage you? Did it lift him up the word that he got? Absolutely not. He was shaken to the core. Because it's not come from the, the you know, uh, the spiritual realm, God's spiritual realm. It's come from the demonic realm. When people seek out information or enter in to the spiritual realm, but not through the legal door, and Jesus is the legal door, they will see things and experience things, but they're not the things of God. And even if they seem wonderful at the time, they will end up unhinging that particular person. And many people go through this. This is why you get people today that, particularly in the societies that we, we live in, that there's many people on drugs today. It's almost like a cultural thing. You know, recreational drugs that young people take. And they're always looking for that high and that experience. And many of them hallucinate. Many of them do have experience where they see things. And some of those things frighten them, some of those things unhinge them. And the reason is, is that they're really seeing into the spiritual realm. But they're not seeing the things that God wants them to see because they've illegally entered that spiritual realm. <coughs> the only legal way in is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you touch the things of the enemy, they will enter in your life and disturb your life, you know, as long as you live, unless you get the delivering power of God. And God wants to set people free from familiar spirits, family spirits that stay with a family. A familiar spirit will try to stay within a family group because it's familiar with the family ways. You know, they say an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So when a person dies, that particular spirit, the body without the spirit is dead, that particular spirit is now seeking another body. And it will seek to affect a person within that family if it can. This is why you sometimes see, you know, a person dies because they're an alcoholic, and somebody who's never drunk within the family, and within a couple of weeks they're drinking heavy. Because the same spirit is affecting them. It is a familiar spirit, it's familiar to family ways, and it brings the familiar problems to that particular family. So it starts to influence them and affect them, and they don't really know what's going on. I had a man who came to me, his, his, his mother had died maybe a week to two weeks previously, and he came to see me and he said, can I, can I have a word with you, Dave? He said, because, uh, you know, he said, you know, my mum's died, he says she's appearing at the side of my bed and trying to touch me. He said he was crying. He said, that can't be my mum, can it? I said, no, it's not your mum. It's appearing to look like your mum, a familiar form. But I said, that's more a succumbus spirit because it was trying to molest him through the night. And there are spirits that do that. There's an incubus spirit. The word incubus, you know, is a Latin word to means to lie upon, a spirit that lies upon. And that's a spirit that will affect the ladies and come against, you know, uh, the ladies to molest in any way, shape or form. But the succumbus <coughs> spirit means to lie under. And that starts to affect, uh, you know, the man. So he was experienced that within his life. And so you have to instruct him to, to, to tell him that it's not his mother. That it's a spirit that is impersonating and he's trying to affect him, to mess up his life and to command him to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so these spirits will look for an opportune time. They often look for a time of weakness, emotional weakness, where a person's lost a loved one, etc., where a person's looking for some guidance. And you know, they will use that opportunity to then affect that person's life. And once you have been to these gatherings. Once you started to communicate with that type of spirit or took its advice in any way, that spirit enters you. And you need delivering power of God to set you free. So we're living in times today where 
is a rising up with a familiar spirit. And they like to stay within the family. You think of when Jesus spoke about a demon leaving a man. And Jesus said, you know, that when a demon is cast out, it will go through those dry or those waterless places, looking for a place to rest. You know, then it will say to itself, I will go back to the house. I will, it's exercising the will, back to the house that is vacated. My point is this, it's referring to the person's life as a house. Your body is a temple, <coughs> your body is a house. It's referring to a person's life as a house, many rooms in the house. But when you think of it, families are often referred to as houses. I said it before, but the royal family is called the House of Windsor. But it's referring to that family line. And so these familiar spirits will try to stay within that family line and perpetuate its work continuously through that family line. So certain people in that family will have similar types of traits and characteristics that are not honourable and good before the Lord. And it comes from that familiar spirit. And the guidance to get comes from that familiar spirit. But where Christians are concerned, they need to start to check out the word of God. I've had countless people over the years who when you're speaking to them, they'll say, but the Lord's told me. And that ends the conversation because you cannot help the person any further because they're adamant the Lord has told them. But you check their life out 12 months, 18 months later, and their lives are in a mess. Or there's been no progression in their life. <clears throat> the Lord's told them, but now they've moved on to other things. I had a man who told me that the Lord had told him to leave the church and start another church. And he told me the district he was starting the church in, the Lord had told him. And so uh, we discussed it for a bit, but the Lord had told him. So then he left. I seen him a number of weeks later and I said, did you start that church in that area? No, the Lord told me to start in a different area. So now we have the Lord telling him something different. And then when I seen him a week or two later, he was starting something in another area as well. He even told me, the Lord's now telling me them to be a, a prison chaplain. The Lord's then telling him to be a chaplain in the hospitals. I said, is the Lord chopping and changing his mind here? It isn't the Lord who's telling him that. Yeah. It's a familiar spirit sounding very similar to the Lord, but it's not of the Lord. I had a person once who, who came for some uh, ministry and uh, they had been having an experience for a number of days when they said the Lord had appeared to them. And he had, you know, uh, these supernatural encounters and great things were happening. The feel good factor, the calorie shakes, everything was coming upon the life. It was a good experience uh, in the presence of the Lord. And then things started to change. Because what they thought was the Lord started to say, Do you love me? Of course I love you, Lord. If you love me, why don't you kill yourself? You see the giveaway? And the person came from, from ministry came for, uh, to be delivered and he got delivered from another Jesus, a spirit called another Jesus that was speaking and appearing to this person to deceive that person, to stop them entering into what God had for them. But they were horrified at the fact they were deceived. And the fact that he was deceived is because they never tested the spirit. Was it of the Lord or was it not? And so we've got to be aware that we're living in a world where the enemy, if he can deceive you in any way, will do so. And where Christians are concerned, he will speak religion to them. He will speak spiritual to them. Bear in mind that Satan spoke to Jesus scripture. Even though it was altered slightly, he spoke to Jesus from the word of God. But Jesus knew the word. And was able to rebuff him. We find in the Bible on one occasion God uses a, a, a prophet to go and to speak to a king and this prophet was told you know don't eat and drink on the way there and don't eat and drink on the way back come back a different way and when he goes and speaks to the king just to cut the long story, uh, story short 
The king then eventually offers him a reward and says, come and eat and drink with me. And he says, no, the Lord has told me not to eat and drink. So he wouldn't obey the voice of a worldly king. But then this old prophet hears about him. He comes to him and says, you know, I too am a, a, a prophet. And an angel of the Lord has told me, come and eat and drink at my house, whatever. And he goes, and my point is this, he wasn't fooled by a worldly king, but when someone started to speak a bit more spiritual to him, he was easily led. And the result was, it cost him his life. A lion devoured him or killed him, didn't devour him, it killed him, uh, and just left him dead at the roadside. And that lion really speaks of the enemy, that's exactly what he will do to people today when you don't generally test out the word of God and the acid test is does it align with the word does it align with my spirit what I'm supposed to be doing who I'm supposed to be does it resonate as correct within me does it bring me peace in that situation and many believers are like loose cannons they're off here there and everywhere because the Lord has told them, except it is not the Lord, just a spirit that is familiar with their ways and knows how to bait the hook. We've got to wise up in the things of God and be free, particularly in these days. Because there's a rise, even within our nation, where you may think there's a decline in true Christianity, there is a rise in a spiritual hunger for, uh, for the supernatural. And so people are going to different places. Look at the rise in witchcraft. If you've been reading the articles recently upon witchcraft, you will find that celebrities go to witches to have spells placed upon them, to have success so that they get the business contract. Uh, business people get a business contract, a celebrity may get a contract for a film or a role in a film pop stars so they get you know the number one song the best seller and he's seeking out supernatural help in these particular areas there's an increase in witchcraft on the internet the twitter witches so to speak there's a massive increase where you can go online and get spells and potions that are real and children to adults are buying into this because they're looking for some power for some supernatural because we made to walk with God we made for the supernatural and so something within us needs to be filled it's like an appetite and so people are going to all these places and so the world is hungry for the supernatural but it needs to see the genuine supernatural of God the reason why they go to the spiritualist is because they're giving no alternative by the church, the genuine believers. And so the church has to rise up in the supernatural power of God and display the signs and the wonders of God to release those prophetic words, to tell them the meaning of dreams, of visions that they've had, to start to share the truth of God's word again so that they're not listening to familiar deceiving spirits and the body of Christ need to be accountable again no one's accountable anymore they're all accountable to themselves if they feel God it feels right or what they believe the Lord is telling them they do there's no accountability or spiritual authority that they come to and yet isn't that the way that God wants it to be that we're accountable so you've got another check over your life God wants us to be free from every spirit that would seek <clears throat> to disturb or to lead people astray young Christians today that will tell you uh, well I don't really believe that a Christian can have a demon effect in the life they believe that everything comes out in the wash and folks everything doesn't come out in the wash I've explained it many, many times by saying that if I own a house legally and I legally sign that house over to a person, give them the keys. If there's squatters in the house, they're not going to move out because it's a change of ownership. 
you have to be forcefully evicted. And why believers think that because they're a believer, you know, a spirit and the Holy Spirit can't live in the same place. They don't exactly live in the same place. But think about the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord had the holies of holies. Then it had the holy place. Then it had the outer court. So these three compartments. Think about you as a believer. Your spirit, your soul, your body, your three compartments. Your spirit is the holies of holies. So when you were born again of the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit comes and he dwells in your spirit, the holies of holies. He seals you in your spirit for the day of redemption. You are marked as being his. But your holy place, your intellect, your emotions, your will, your soulish area, your body, the outer courts are still subject to the enemy's attacks and occupation. And so he lives in the outer courts and you've got to deal with those issues, remove him. He lives in sometimes the, the, the mind and affects a person's thinking. You've got to deal with those issues and get the enemy out. When you read through the word of God, the word of God is clear that we're to be sober, we're to be vigilant because the enemy, the devil, prowls around, roams around like a roaring lion. He isn't a roaring lion, but like a roaring lion to see who he can devour. So he's looking to devour. And Peter's writing this to believers. The Bible also says, give no place to the devil. Again, written to believers. What place to the devil are you not to give? Your place. Any room within your house to the enemy. Because he seeks that place. And once he gets that place, he will then seek to enlarge his kingdom. So God says, don't give the enemy a place. <clears throat> the Bible also says, submit to God. <clears throat> the first thing you do. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. If he's fleeing from you, it means he's in the presence of you. He's trying to work against you. Again, it's written to believers. It's not written to non-believers. All the way through the word of God, you will find that there are believers that can be affected. Ananias and Sapphira. The Bible says that Satan entered their heart. They were born again. They were in a revival situation. Simon the sorcerer. The Bible tells us he believed when Philip preached the word of God. He believed and was baptised. That makes him a believer, a born again believer. He believed the gospel and he was baptised, but he still had major issues within his life. So all the way through the word of God, you will, you will find that there are people like this, that God genuinely wants to, to deal with and sort out, sort out their lives. So just to, to think I'm born again and I've got no issues, why do people lie? Why do people, believers, commit adultery? Because they've got doubt with the enemy within their lives. And we've got to remove that from our lives. And it's only deliverance that will do that. And according to Luke's gospel, that deliverance is to set you free from the power of the enemy so that you can serve the Lord in holiness, in righteousness, with no fear all the days of your life. So the purpose is there. <clears throat> And many in the church need to be set free. They're still allowing the enemy to dictate and to control their lives. God wants his people to be free. So we've got to buy into the truth and not the lie. See, it's very convenient to think, well, the enemy cannot affect me. You know what that does for the enemy? It gives them a safeguard. Because if you think the enemy cannot affect you as a believer, cannot infiltrate your life as a believer, then he, the enemy is, is free to continue his work unopposed. And yet the ministry of Jesus, he drove out the demonic powers. And he's not just talking about unbelievers. Because if you drove out demonic power from an unbeliever and he don't surrender their life to Jesus, to be the enemy will be all over him again. You've got to replace it with the Spirit of God and be born of the Spirit of God. So you will get occasion when you pray for an unbeliever, they'll get set free and they'll give their life to Jesus Christ. But where believers are concerned, 
God will start to strip off and remove from their lives the things that ought not to be there. And there are many things that have entered believers' lives. And sometimes they're listening to the wrong voice because it sounds like the voice of the Lord. These people today, these celebrities today, that get paid a lot of money for impersonating other celebrities. And if you didn't uh, see the person, you just heard their voice, you would think it was them. They sound so um, familiar, so sane. And so God wants us to be people that recognise his voice above every other voice. And to know his voice, my, my sheep hear my voice. So we've got to be accustomed to his voice. A sheep will recognise the voice of the shepherd. It will not respond to anybody else. But it will respond to the voice of the shepherd. And we've got to have our ears so attuned to the Lord that we don't respond to the voice of the enemy, we only respond to the voice of the living God. Even if the enemy wraps up what he's saying in some spiritual terminology, we've got to believe the things of God. You see, the enemy listens to you, he observes you, he knows your desires because you vocalise them. That's where I have the ability to bind the enemy from hearing the things that we say. So he doesn't get a jump and oppose him what you were doing, or thinking, we'll be praying for this, are they? Let's just bring something else in. So he doesn't get that opportunity to do that. We need to be open to the living God. And if you've been involved in anything that God would consider to be the occult, you need to repent of those things and ask God to forgive you, to renounce that sin, to turn around from the way you're going, and ask God to deliver you and set you free. And God will set you free because you desire it. And as someone once said, he will never set you free from your friends, only from your enemies. So if you like what you've got, you will continue to have it. And we've got to move away from this powerless Christianity and this flaky Christianity that follows everything to believing in the truth of God's word and applying the truth in our life. So we're going to pray right now. And you know, if anything that's said tonight um, has spoken to you clearly that you recognise something in your life, then God will set you free. He will deliver you, you know, from those familiar spirits and those voices. Before I knew the Lord Jesus Christ, before I knew him, almost like as a bit of fun with some of the guys, I went on the Ouija board. You know what that brought into my life? A spirit of fear. But Jesus Christ set me free. And he set me free from looking from guidance to demonic powers. Even though you might think it's a dead relative and they care for you. It's a demonic power. He set me free from those things. But I had to be honest and come before the Lord and repent of those things, a real renouncing of this, to speak them off my life. And allow the Holy Spirit to come in and deliver me from those demonic powers. He did the same for you. It's a miracle working God. So let's just pray right now and we'll trust God to move in power within our lives. Father, I just give you thanks and I give you praise tonight that you say you shall know the truth and it's the truth that sets us free. Truth, Father God, listened to and then applied in our lives and I pray that we'd apply the truth. Father, I thank you that we belong to you. We've been purchased with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, we will not give our allegiance to anything or anyone else. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray you would deliver us, Father God, from every uh, deceiving spirit, every familiar spirit, in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bind the power of familiar spirits, I break their hold, and I command them to vacate lives even now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will recognise, Father God, <coughs> where a voice comes from in the name of Jesus. We lose your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You be blessed.